As we mentioned in our previous story, when the Federal Bureau of Investigation started in 1908, it was known as the Bureau of Investigation. In 1935, it was changed to the FBI. Our next piece is not meant to be a thorough backstory of the FBI. We're focusing on FBI files of the famous and forgotten to get a glimpse of how our government works. Its fundamental role, to protect the innocent, to apprehend the guilty, this is your FBI. The primary... Organized crime, civil rights, bank robberies, the FBI investigates 200 different federal crimes. Everyone from actors to athletes have FBI files, and once they die, anyone can gain access to those files. They were using him as an informant, but with some skepticism. Robert Hergeth is an investigative reporter at the Chicago Sun-Times and has spent years digitizing files of the famous. Well, the process can be kind of maddening. You know, the FBI files are like tea leaves and you can kind of read them and sort of well, what's going on here and you know what's being with, withheld here tens of thousands of pages because of time or quality of printing they can be difficult to decipher but often revealing they also did things like keep tabs on people's sexuality why is that their business and their politics and their politics too it's like, are we not in a country of free speech? Well, to the FBI, free speech could be dangerous. What were the factors that led to that mindset and their ability to get away with that? The fact that it was a secretive organization led by really a very sinister, secretive guy in J. Edgar Hoover. And it talks about all the, all the uh, surveillance with uh, Let's take a look at some of the famous FBI files Hergeth and his team digitize. Like Ernest Hemingway, who grew up in Oak Park, Illinois. He was a rascal, as we know, and very challenging of authority, but at the same time, had a lot of bravado about him. During World War II, he's living in Cuba when the government taps him to monitor the area for Nazis. He supposedly sees a German U-boat, but there's skepticism about whether it's true. And the FBI wanted to use him, or the government, and yet they also didn't fully trust him but it shows sort of the depth and the lengths that the government went to to really get a handle ahead of our real entry into the war on, on the Germans. Silver and gold decorations. Most of us know Burl Ives as the snowman in the Rankin Bass Christmas special. But in his prime, this native of downstate Illinois is quite famous. He was dragged before one of the McCarthy hearings back in, I think, the early 50s about his alleged communist sympathies by him. And unlike a lot of people of that era who said, you know, forget you, yeah. you know, to McCarthy and his people, he said, okay. And he went and he testified and, uh, and he named names. To preserve his career. That was the thought, to preserve his career. And he was reviled after that for a long time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce my first guest. Jack Benny was a native of Waukegan, Illinois. It dealt with uh, some sort of smuggling investigation that he was part of, I believe, for jewelry, and he and George Burns, and it was just crazy thing that who would have thought, and it did go to court. My recollection was resolved without any sort of prison time or anything, but it was a, like a scary little moment and this little sort of flashpoint in this guy's career that I had no idea. Now, the rest of the story. National radio newsman Paul Harvey also has an FBI file for breaking and entering. I believe his intent was to test the security of one of our nuclear sites or one of our atomic sites, that I believe it was Argonne National Lab, yeah. you know, hopped a fence or walked right up and to show that the security was really bad and it was and it wasn't because he got in, but then he got arrested, so, well. <laughs> Chicago Bears founder George Hallis has an FBI file that's a bit mysterious. It references that Hallis has helped us at various times over the years, meaning helped the FBI. I can never really get to the bottom of what that meant. Hergeth says some suggest Hallis was helping the FBI monitor illegal gambling. Regional offices throughout the country in most principal cities, more than 19,000 men and women of the FBI are dedicated to serving the government. What does the FBI have to say about itself looking back? They are doing some right things now in reckoning the past. For instance, releasing this stuff, you know, just understanding how government works or worked, 
because I think it works probably in some ways similarly even today. And also I just believe in as journalists and as people that the truth is the truth. You know, and that's one of the most cool things about our jobs to pursue that. So if you if you have that mindset wanting to know how the world works and how the sausage is made, these FBI files can be very informative. Sometimes informative, sometimes you see nothing but black. As part of Fred Rohde's file, Fred Rohde being a now deceased uh, Chicago alderman and a made member of the Chicago mob. <laughs> a lot of blacked out. Yeah. But Hergeth says these files are only from what the FBI calls its central file. Some files have many redactions, leaving journalists to continue investigating more secrets. It is curious to think, what's going to be on that vault in 20, 30 years, you know, and what's going on right now that's being chronicled that we don't know. For more on this story, head to our website, wgntv.com slash backstory. Coming up on Backstory, another look at these rare home movies of the Osage tribe in the 1920s and the Native American team that took on the NFL champs.